Hey everyone. So my stream this morning <laughs> ended abruptly. Sorry about that. Uh, OBS died on me and it started dropping frames and I restarted it and it survived for about another, I don't know, minute or two and then it died again and I couldn't recover it. So I'm sorry about that. For those that caught the stream, thank you for, for joining. Uh, there is an outcome that, um, you know, there is an ending and it's a, a mostly a happy ending. For those that didn't catch the stream and didn't know what I was working on, I was actually working on the third attempt at the first build of my Tiny Pico GPIO expander board. So for those that aren't aware of what this is, it's a board that the Tiny Pico plugs into and it offers 16 additional digital IO through I2C. It also has four 12-bit ADCs that are connected via I2C as well. It's got a 5 volt level shifter on there that breaks out three of the pins from the Tiny Pico to give you 5 volt logic if you want to connect it to something that requires 5 volts, whether it's driving RGB LEDs or whether it's just a module that needs 5 volts. And there's also an SD card reader on there for a micro SD, so you can use it for storage and logging and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool board, and I've been waiting a long time to make it and see if it works, and it mostly works. Uh, here is the, the version that I built on stream that has the headers and everything. So what happened was I built the board, everything worked great except for one thing. The 5 volt level shifter, or 3, or just the level shifter in general, that was shifting 3.3 .3 to 5 volts wasn't working. And we discovered that I hadn't hooked up the enable pin to the VCC A side. So you got VCC A, which is the low side, and VCC B, which is the high side. So the actual chip is designed to be driven off the VCC A side on the enable, pull down to ground when it's not there because the actual chip itself has to be turned off unless VCC A and VCC B are both ready. So there's a problem there, right? If you're running the board off the Tiny Pico through USB, then it's not a problem because you've got five volts and you've got 3.3 volts. But what's if you wanna use this board, let's say off a battery, and you just want to use it for some extra I.O. and there is no 5 volt source, what would happen is the level shifting chip would get a VCC A high and enable on the chip with no VCC B present. And that's actually bad for the chip. It's designed to not work that way. So looking back at my notes, it actually turns out that I had deliberately left it not connected, but I meant to connect it, but not to VCC A. So my plan was originally to connect it to one of the GPIO of the Tiny Pico that would allow someone using the board to decide if they wanted to enable or disable the level shifter. So if there was no 5 volt present, they could disable it or maybe it was disabled by default and they could enable it if 5 volt was present as well. The problem was I could never pick a GPIO that I wanted to use because that would have taken away one IO from the Tiny Pico and I didn't particularly want to do that. And it turns out I forgot to pick one and I got the boards made. So it wasn't that I forgot to connect it to VCCA, my intent was to connect it to an IO. I still don't like the idea of picking an IO, but I think I've come up with a better solution. I'm going to use an AND gate like I do on my Pro S2 board to basically detect if the USB is present. So it'll work something like this. Here's my schematic for the IO expander, and over here you can see the level shifter and I've got my enable line coming in here. What I've added is this AND gate like I just mentioned and it works by having the two inputs being the 3.3 volt source that's coming obviously from the Tiny Pico and a 5 volt source coming in that goes through a voltage divider to give me roughly 3 volts on the other gate. So the AND gate will say if there is two sets of 3.3 volt logic then turn on the enable, otherwise it gets pulled down to ground through a 10k resistor. Because the requirement for the chip is that if the voltages aren't present, you must have the chip turned off. You can't leave it floating. It's got to be pulled down to ground, it's got to be turned off, otherwise you can damage the chip. So I can't just remove this pull down and hope that whatever output comes from the gate is going to be low enough. Now this is the same AND gate that I'm using on my Pro S2. The reason I'm putting the USB, the 5 volts through a voltage divider is this particular AND gate. It uses the voltage that's actually driving the IC, which is in this case is 3.3 volts, 
and you get a plus or minus 0.4. So I can only take an input up to about 3.7 volts. So five volts would probably fry the chip. So it's going through the voltage divider. What's nice is the voltage divider is only happening off the USB power. So there's no battery drain if there's no USB connected and you're running off battery. So this should now give me everything I need to automatically drive the level shifter if both 3.3 volts and 5 volts is present. And because both of the voltages will be available at the time that the AND gate switches, that's the perfect scenario for this chip. To make sure that there wasn't something else wrong with the chip and my wiring, I put a bodge wire on one of the boards that I built today and connected the OE directly to the 3.3 volts and it looks something like this. These are the two boards that I built on the stream this morning. This one here still has some bridges on some pins which I haven't fixed. That's fine, we decided instead of fixing that to see if this worked. So I finished this off by soldering headers in and as you can see here that is the bodge wire that I added. So this particular wire is going from the VCC A or the 3.3 volt pin which is the top left pin over here all the way around to the enable pin. It's actually tacked onto the top of the pull down resistor for the enable but this wire permanently keeps the enable high and I've tested it all and it works great. I get 5 volts out of these last three pins which is 27, 15 and 14 and I get 3 volts out of the same pins over here from the Tiny Pico. So it's working as intended which is fantastic. While I was at it I also spun around the LED over here which is really really close to the side of this header so a little bit of kept on tape and that was great I had it the wrong way around it worked but it meant that it was the inverse of what it was supposed to be doing that's now been fixed which is cool and while I was working on the AND gate solution for this I also designed and 3D printed a little base for it and the base just press fits into the mounting holes so as you can see here I've got four mounting holes on the board for those people that want to mount this to a, a project box or something and the piece just press fits in and it's great and it prevents the solder joints at the back of the board from scratching on your desk which is nice because no one likes to scratch up their desk so there we go I'm extremely happy with this board everything now on it works as intended so JLC PCB are back from holidays tomorrow I will put this into submission and get the next revision of this made along with some other boards and hopefully I'll be able to build the final version of it very soon. If you didn't catch my stream earlier today, uh, here's a link to it again, just here. It was a pretty awesome stream, we had a lot of fun. I showed the current state of the Tiny Pico Nano, so I highly recommend you checking out the stream if you want to. It was a pretty good laugh. If you're new here, please subscribe, and please click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To my patrons, you're wicked awesome. And until next time, I will catch you all later. Bye.